Today I'm going to be going over Microsoft Advertising, aka Bing Ads, Dynamic Search Ads campaigns. So the very first thing I want to go over is if you have an existing search campaign, and this, this account exists for the sole purpose of tutorials, so don't mind all these different campaigns I have in here. But what we could do is if you have an existing search campaign, you can create dynamic ad groups within your search campaign. So you'll see here right now it's showing no ad groups. Let's get rid of our filter here. Uh, so we have a couple different ad groups here. These are both just standard ad groups that are targeting keywords. So what we can do is we can create a brand new ad group. And when we create a new ad group in Microsoft Advertising, the very first thing you're going to see up here is whether or not the ad group is a standard or a dynamic ad group type. So let's click on the drop down. We can change this to a dynamic ad group, change the ad group type. And now what we can do is run dynamic ads within our search campaigns. Now there's something you need to do within your settings just to make sure you can enable dynamic search ads within your search campaign, but we'll do that afterwards. So we'll enter our website here. So I'm just going to be using my website, brickpop.com, um, and we'll grab a page from brickpop.com. Let's just come over here to the shop page, and we'll find a page that we can use for our dynamic search ads. So let's come over to our Microsoft advertising account here. Website language is going to be English for my website. And then targeting source, you could either use Bing's index of your website, URLs from your page feed only. I will go over page feeds in a minute. Use URLs both from Bing's index of my website and my page feed. So three different options there. And then as we come down here, we can create dynamic ad targets. So I'm just going to use Bing's index of my website because I don't have a page feed. So it doesn't make sense to choose these other two. Um, we are going to enable dynamic search ad text. So I'll go through that in a little bit. So let's name our ad group and let's come over here and choose one of the pages on my shop. So we'll choose a product category page. And what we could do with our dynamic search ads is we can actually say, okay, what we want to target for this specific mon or this specific dynamic search ad is going to be Montessori play gyms. So we're going to take this URL and we're just going to copy the link. So we're going to come back over to our Microsoft advertising account. Let's name our ad group. So it's Montessori play gyms. Um, let's make sure we have the right. Okay, yeah, Montessori Play Gym's there. Uh, we're not going to use ad group setting from another ad group. And then you could see target categories of web pages. So they don't actually have my website here. This is a pretty new website. So I don't even know if there's how indexed it is in Bing Ads. Um, we could target all web pages or we could target specific web pages. And that's really what you want to do. You can create an ad group that targets all web pages and just basically make sure that every single web page on your website is being targeted. It's not something I do generally. It really depends on you know what my overall goals are. So target exact URLs in my site, or you can create rules. So we're in this case, if we do exact URLs, what we could do is just copy and paste this URL. We can add all. So you can add multiple different pages to your website. So maybe I want to create uh, some for this specific category, Montessori Play Gyms. And maybe what I can do is pull out some of the different products as well. Now, this is where what you can do is we'll open this page really quickly. What you can do is create rules as well instead of using exact URLs. So I'll go over rules in a second, but basically all you need to do is enter any of the URLs that you actually want to target here. And then you're going to see, it's going to say, leave the bid empty to use the default ad group bid. You should be using smart bidding anyway, even if you're just using maximize conversions or maximize conversion value and obviously using your conversion tracking as well. So that is a separate video and a separate, uh, you know, a separate tutorial. And I did recently create a Bing ads tutorial. So I'll link that in the video description in case you are interested in watching that one. But if we scroll down here, well, all we need to do is create an ad. So creating dynamic ads actually makes this very easy because our ad title uses a dynamically generated headline, which is generally just going to be the headline right here, Montessori play gyms. And it's going to match pretty much what people are searching. So if you're actually targeting some of these uh, specific pages like this, and let's just say we use this one, this one as an example, so we can target this specific page. And then when somebody searches for this, our search ad will actually come up directly in Bing, Yahoo, any of the other Bing search partners. And from there, what we can do is send people directly to this product page. So we can take that as well and copy this link address, come back over to our uh, ad group here, say, let's cancel this. Let's add another URL, add all, and you can add a huge list of URLs here. And now we have both of these URLs. I wish it didn't cut off these URLs, but these are the two URLs, the uh, Montessori Play Gyms URL and the actual specific Play Gym here. So you can do that to target individual pages, individual products, or product category pages. And then what all you really need to do when you're creating your advertisement is set your ad text one, ad text two. So like your description lines. So they will also generate dynamic search ad text in addition to the text we provide. And then you can set your path here. The final URL is dynamic 
a dynamically selected landing page. So essentially all you need to do to create your advertisements is write two 90 character description lines or less than 90 characters. Two description lines here, click on save, and now you have a dynamic ad group. Now the other option when it comes to targeting, and we're gonna remove all of our targets here, is to create a rule. So what you could do is say URL contains, and I can say something like Montessori, and I can say play and gyms. Okay, so what that would do is the URL contains Montessori play gyms. That means that our actual product category here contains Montessori play gyms. So that would target that specific play, this specific category page and any of the URLs that have Montessori play gyms in it. So if we look up at the top here, Montessori play gyms, it would target all of those there. And then what we can look at is if we're coming over to some of these different pages, now some of these may not be perfect in terms of the targeting because not all of them contain the actual keywords Montessori play gyms in them because you can see the way I have this set up, brickpop.com slash product. And then what you would have to do is make sure, so this one has Montessori jungle gym. So what we could also do is just say, let's make sure this is really targeted or let's make sure we have enough volume here so we have anything that contains Montessori and gyms. So then if it's Montessori jungle gyms or play gyms, we add all of these and now we have URL contains those. And then what we could also do is say, and URL contains Montessori and, and maybe something like jungle and add all that would target any that have Montessori jungle gyms. And then if we really wanna make this, you know, increase our volume, we could just say URL contains gyms and assume that any of the URLs on our website that are, have Montessori play gyms or jungle gyms or any of these like that, that we are targeting all of these different keywords. So now what we have is our target, which you basically just could use this target gyms. You don't need the other two. Uh, but what we could do is we can use that for our target. Now I've used an example recently with Google ads using TripAdvisor and the way TripAdvisor has their URL set up is if we are want to target a specific if we wanna target every single hotel in Nashville, you could basically say URL contains, because the way they're not, their URLs are set up, and I'll show you in a second, URL contains Nashville and URL contains hotel. So let's open TripAdvisor real quick. And if we use these as our target, like as our rules for our URLs, URL contains Nashville and URL contains hotel, and we open up any of the individual pages for Nashville Hotel. So this is a specific hotel in Nashville, Drury Plaza. And you can see here the URL, the way it's set up at the very top, it starts with hotel underscore review. And then what you can see down here is Nashville, downtown Nashville. So basically every single hotel contains the word hotel in it and the word Nashville when it comes to Nashville Hotel. So it makes it much easier to target than trying to target specific individual keywords like Drury Plaza Hotel, Nashville, downtown. That is really a great reason to actually use dynamic search ads is if you're a trip advisor and you're trying to target for thousands or you know however many hotels they have you can basically use this these target specific web pages on my website now you have an ad group for nashville you can create an ad group for let's say charleston you can create an ad group for miami and you're able to target all of these different hotels within these different locations and you can obviously set up different different campaigns because you want to target different areas so it really depends on how they have everything set up but it does make it easier using dynamic search ads within your search campaign and then all you need to do is add these targets so you need to set the targets add them now this would target every single hotel in miami on the tripadvisor website and then all you need to do is create your advertisement add your ad text, save and create your ad group. It's really that simple to create dynamic search ad groups. Now, one of, a few of the things that you need to do is if we come back over here, when you go into your campaign and you go to your campaign settings, so let's open up our campaign we had here. So we're in the ad group level. Let's come over to the campaign level. We'll select our sample campaign that we've been working on. And then when we click through here and we go to our settings, so a lot of different campaign settings here, but one of the campaign settings is gonna be whether or not you wanna enable dynamic search ads. So we scroll to the bottom here, enable auto-generated assets for responsive search ads, and then what you would have to do is enable dynamic search ads. So you can enter your website here and you can have your targeting source as well. So you definitely need to have this in your campaign settings if you do wanna create dynamic search ad groups. And you can also enable these throughout the campaign creation process come all the way to the bottom, we click on save, and now we were able to actually use dynamic search ads within our Bing ads campaign. So you wanna make sure you have that setting checked. 
Now, a couple of different things to go over really quickly is if you go over here to tools and you go to business data, this is where you can actually create a page feed and use that for your targeting. So I was looking for the template on Microsoft Advertising's website, but they use the same exact template as Google Ads. So the way the template works is you have two columns, so A and B. The A column says page URL, the B column says custom label. What you can do is you set specific page URLs here. So using the example of TripAdvisor, what they can do is say, okay, let's take, and we have hotels in Savannah here. Let's take uh, hotels in Savannah, which is their main, which I don't think this isn't the right URL. I just created this fake URL here. Um, but you can take this URL here and then you set custom labels. So Savannah, Savannah hotels and hotels. And then what they can do is put each individual hotel in Savannah. So we'll just use these example ones here. And then for each of those hotels, what you could do is the same exact thing here. So have those custom labels. And then what you do is you actually use, maybe for some of these, you get rid of just Savannah on its own. You just do Savannah hotels. And then what you can do is just target this label of Savannah hotels. So if you have a really organized page feed with labels for exactly what you're targeting, it's going to help you actually keep things a little bit more organized within your dynamic search ads campaigns. But I personally think it's much easier just to use the page URL rules because we could literally take hotel and we could take Nashville and do this for every single city on TripAdvisor. And it's really that simple to actually get that to work for us. So coming back over to our Microsoft advertising account, if you want to create a dynamic search ads campaign, pretty much similar to how we set up the, the ad group, all you're going to do is you're going to create a brand new campaign here. Your goal is going to be, generally you want to do conversions on your website. So this is what I would recommend using with search ads. Click on next. You want to make sure you have conversion tracking set up. Name your campaign. So let's put a name for our campaign here. Okay, so we have dynamic search ads example. Set your campaign budget. Set your location targeting. Who should see your ads? People in your targeted location. People searching or viewing pages about your targeted location. Generally, I keep it in. Depends on what you're targeting. Uh, keep scrolling down, set your language targeting. You can enable auto-generated assets for your responsive search ads. A lot of times I will enable this if it, I think it will improve the advertisements. And then you want to enable dynamic search ads. And this is where you want to enter your website. So we'll say brickpop.com. Use Bing, Bing's index of my website. Use URLs for my page feed only or use both. I'm going to just use Bing's index on my website because I didn't upload a page feed. If I were to upload a page feed for this website, basically what I would do is I would have a label for Montessori toys and you would have all of these different product category pages in there. And what I could do is target that label and it will basically target every single product category page here. You could also make it more granular and have, okay, Montessori balance boards, bath toys, blocks, busy boards, et cetera, et cetera. Make all of those individual labels. This is where to me, it just makes it easier to actually just use the page URLs because you can also use negative dynamic ad targets, which I'll go through in a minute. So within our new campaign, save and go to the next step. And now we're going to set up our ad groups and you can see we have dynamic ad groups or standard ad groups here. So we could choose one or the other or both. Um, but if we do dynamic ad groups, we can set our ad group name. We'll just use our same example from earlier, Montessori Play Gyms. And what we want to do is let's say target categories. We don't have any categories for this. You can target all web pages. That would basically just make sure that you have every single page in your targeting. In this case, we want to target specific web pages and we're going to take this URL and we're going to come over to Microsoft advertising. And what we want to do is enter that specific URL there, click on add all. And now we have our dynamic ad target here. That's going to target this specific product category page. So if we want to target all these individual products, what we would want to do is say rules. Let's just say we want to target Montessori play gyms, the product category page and every single product page we could say URL contains. And what would probably work is if we do gym because every single one of those URLs probably contains gym. So we opened up this one here. So this one has three pieces, Montessori jungle gym. Okay. So this has jungle gym here. Um, so whether it contains gym or gyms, either way it will target, but most of these here, I mean, a lot of them just pull directly from, so this one wouldn't actually be targeted, but that's perfectly fine. So what you could do is if you go through each of these individual products, you could always say, okay, let's say coming over here. So URL contains gym URL equals this one here. So you can enter a bunch of different targets. So we have our URL equals, this is our product category page. URL contains gym that would include every single Montessori play gym, jungle gym that we have here. And then we could also just take some of these here where if it doesn't have gym in the actual product name, then it's not going to actually have that in our 
targeting. So we could just come over here and use exact URLs and enter some of those exact URLs as well. There's no issue if you have the same target twice. So if, if this one, this URL equals targets this product category page, this URL contains Jim would also target this product category page. That's perfectly fine. So you don't want to add a million different ad targets, but you want to try to find, okay, now we're targeting all of these different, di different pages on our website that are all relevant to this specific ad group. And now we have our dynamic ad target all set up. We can add a new ad group, but let's save and go to the next step. And now from there, what we would want to do is create our advertisement. So very simple. You write your two ad texts here. You want to make sure you're adding your ad extensions to your advertisements as well. So you can do action extensions here, price extensions, promotion extensions. There's site link extensions. Obviously, you want to add these. I have a bunch of different site link extensions because I've used other websites in this account as for examples. Um, call out structured snippets, filter link extensions, review, location, call, flyer, basically any relevant extension to your business. I always say use all it does is it makes your advertisement bigger, gives more information in your advertisement and basically gives you more relevancy overall from there, save and go to the next step and you can launch your campaign. And it's that simple to create dynamic search ads campaigns. What you want to do is create a bunch of different ad groups. And since it's so much easier to create your advertisements, because all you have to do is set two different description lines, what you could do is create easily create dynamic ad targets with different ad groups for all of these different categories on your website. So I would be able to set up this campaign pretty quickly through Microsoft advertising or through Google ads. You can also import your dynamic search ads directly from Google ads into Microsoft advertising. So always keep that in mind. And we'd be able to set up these targets really quickly and create a campaign really quickly. And then basically Microsoft advertising does the work for us in a lot of ways when it comes to targeting. They're going to use our individual pages, whether it's products, whether it is a product category page to target people that are searching for some of the different things that are on our website. So this is how dynamic search ads work. Now let's come back over here to our campaigns. Okay, let's leave this campaign. Okay, and what you can see here is on the left-hand side, if we click on dynamic ad targets, a couple different things. First and foremost, you can still add negative keywords for your dynamic ad targets. So if you already have a negative keyword list, a list of negative keywords that you apply to your campaigns, you know, things like free, affordable, template, jobs, hiring, things that are, you know, if somebody's going to search that keyword, you don't want to be targeting them. Even if somebody's saying, you know, Montessori schools that are hiring, you don't want that person to be going to your website because you're trying to sell toys. So you're trying to find people that are actively searching for toys. So you definitely still want to use negative keywords for your dynamic ad targeting. And then what you could also do under dynamic ad targets here is set negative dynamic ad targets. So pretty easy, add an exclusion, select your campaign. So we'll use our brick pop dynamic search ads. And what you could do is say, okay, there's certain URLs I just don't want to include in my targeting. Maybe they are, you know, for the most part, you're not going to have issues where like Google sending traffic to your privacy policy page or your contact us page, because they're looking for valuable pages on your website, such as product pages like this. Potentially, if you have uh, blog posts where there are aff affiliate products or ads in your blog posts and things like that, where you have valuable pages on your website. Now you could say, okay, I have some of these different informative pages on my website. I don't want them included in my targeting. So that's where you would use some of those negative ad targets. So those are dynamic search ads, makes it a little bit easier to create your search campaigns. If you already have a really good website with a lot of information that's keyword focused, you don't need to create a brand new search campaign that's all targeting keywords because you can use these dynamic ad targets incorporate negative keywords, incorporate negative dynamic ad targets, and then allow Microsoft advertising or Google ads to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So these are Microsoft advertising dynamic search ads campaigns. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section. Again, you can combine standard ad groups with dynamic ad groups. I have found for the most part that standard ad groups take precedence over dynamic ad groups. So for targeting specific keywords, and then we're also targeting dynamic ad targets. Generally, the keywords are going to be what Google uses um, in just based on what I've seen in the past, but maybe not always the case. And maybe it depends on how things are performing. So if you do have an existing search campaign that you're trying to expand, uh, so we have this sample campaign here, this is where you can try to use dynamic search ads and see if you can expand that campaign a little bit and in, give some more targeting in terms of the different things you offer on your website and hopefully just give more options to drive conversions back to your website when you are trying to use some of these automated bidding strategies and really trying to maximize your overall return on ad spend. So if you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.